Stay in chat, casters are always ready, so we're gonna jump right into it. Now arriving at Yijang Tower. We are going right in, we'll see how Yijang looks up. This is a map that uh, Q really did not want to fight HUK on, but they are more than willing to fight ninjas with attitude on, so we'll see how things work here. And I don't think the Torbjorn is for real, but man, would it be glorious if it was. Everyone likes a good Torbjorn, that, that's for sure. Uh, never seen him on King of the Hill, and I've casted a lot, a lot of Overwatch. I have literally never seen a Torb on King of the Hill. Uh, so that would be interesting, I don't think we'll see it. Generally, King of the Hill hasn't changed all that much, right? You've got your two tanks and two supports that you always see, except when teams try to run the variation of the Ana. But you're gonna see a Zarya, you're gonna see a Winston on both sides. You're gonna see a Lucio, and you're gonna see a Zen on both sides. That's just how it goes. Now, the differences do come on DPS. It does not look like either team wants to run a different DPS this game now? Uh, not in particular, no. Uh, this is pretty standard across the board. We will be seeing the double flankers on both sides. Zarya, of course, and Winston, the double tank combo that is super mandatory on these control maps nowadays, at least what teams really like running with. So we'll see how it works out between the two teams. Yeah, now Watt had, a, Watt, yeah, Watt had a really nice game yesterday. Him and uh, Hafu and Reels also played really well. So I want to see what Watt does on his rollout here. Right, right now, we'll be leaping in character spot. We'll be getting the third show right away. See the first Zarya Winston combo coming in. And that was cool in the back. We're going to take out Tahoon immediately. It's two quick kills coming out here from the side of Ninja's with Attitude. And look at the Q Genji. He's in a rough shape right now. Like, Endless is going to fall. And this is looking like it's going to be a very quick size of capture here for Ninjas. Uh, nothing flashy, just. What you saw there was that Q's Winston engaged a little bit early. Yeah. Got punished. And from there, it was worked out all in favor. It was actually super patient by them, too, because generally, as soon as you see a Winston jump in, the other Winston's gonna go in, too. He stayed back to protect the rest of his team, got some damage on the opposing Winston, and then Hafu able to clean up as well. Hafu's been playing phenomenally. Reels also gets a really early pulse bomb on, does not find anyone to kill with it, though. Alright, here comes Watt. already just juggling Zarya around in the corner. Ends up taking out Endless as a result, so Watt winning a value off that Primal Rage. Two kills here from the side of Ninjas, they're moving it forward. ZZA oh, is Tracer. Down. Gets the Tracer too, really nice play from Watt there, as his Winston's been phenomenal. They continue to clean up as Reels comes in on the cleanup, takes down Dahoon, and they're gonna have this Dragon Blade at the ready too. There's a lot going in favor right now. This Dragon Blade, of course, the biggest thing in the upcoming fight. It's gonna be rolling out. There's not going to be a sound barrier for it just yet. God Hand, not quite there. Probably won't get it in this fight. Let's see what half it has off his sleeve. Goes to the back line, finds the Yada right away. Dahoon going to fall. Needs a lot of damage in the process. A lot of damage. So that's an okay trade for the offense. Good thing making most of it here for the in the back line, looking brainless, will get that pick off. His team is dying all around him, though. It's a 1v3 right now for Jolson. I, we know Tracer is in for Duke Arch, but this is going to be pretty rough. ZZA and Jolson getting in there. But... Well, they're stopping attention to him. He had a really good chance, actually, to clean it up. But Spree has also been playing a great Zarya the last couple days. He does find him late at the end, but it looked like they, their focus had shift. He might have been able to drop a Pulse Bomb somewhere in there. Does not find it. Now they're going to have to try to push into this Graviton from Spree. Not ideal. It's not ideal, they will have a sound barrier though at the very least, but this is grab some final push. Here comes grab time, going to fall into forces out the transcendence immediately, so that just wants to stay alive. That transcendence is going to be traded for the grab time. There we go, fight taking place right on top of the point. Winston Primal Rage is out. In comes the transcendence here from the defense of Ninjas. And half the school will get the first pick off on the endless wheels in the back line, doing all sorts of tracer, taking out the hoop. It's three kills here from the ninjas, and once more Q on the back foot, and they were able to take control of the point and will that, or at least so maybe they fought themselves enough time for one last push, but it's gonna be very nice. It's gonna be tough. Half a ghoul just went absolutely insane on his dash resets. They're getting three kills towards the end there. They are gonna try to bust out here. Endless is gonna have to hit a Graviton, but the blade is coming out from Hoppe. Does he find anyone in the background? He does have eyes on the Tracer, gets one kill, takes down Dahoon. So that is three kills really early on for Ninjas. 3v6 to try to bring this back. It's looking rough for you. It's looking incredibly rough, and Q, they're not going to be able to keep this in overtime. First round will be going to the side of Ninjas, and even though they you to look at Q, they were able to get control of the point once there. It was in the middle of a losing fight. They sacrificed the fight to get control of it, and they got 20%. They bought themselves enough time for extra attack, but at no point in that game did it really look like uh, Q was really competing with ninjas on the same level and all that came down to it was both tank play and also just happy was getting far more done than zza yeah for most of that it was a really good game for happy and we'll see how things go here as we get into the next round but certainly well, 
we saw ZZA run a really nice fair. I mean, yes, there was a disconnect, but he was hitting every single rocket he was trying to put down. So at some point, you might think if they lose this one, even though I think this is a good map for Farah, that they start switching it up, because you're absolutely right. Hoppy's Genji was miles above ZZA's Genji. One other thing of note here, too, is that what not the patience of the Winston Saps here. XQC went in immediately, and they were just really content to hold back and just deal with them as he came in with their own Winston yeah. Saps. So we'll see what Watt has here. Watt is through. actually going to dive in here on the other Ooh, side. Hoppy and Watt combined to take out Jolson immediately, which is really nice. Watt now in the background, continually uncontested. Hoppy continues to clean up. Watt also adds one in, so a really nice start, although they are bringing it back. A couple nice kills from Q. Hoppy start out with a really good double kill towards the back line. Now versus Winston, not the best matchup here versus Genji, but he is back up. It's real ZX and Happy versus Winston. They're gonna take it out. And they should be able to clean this up here and get first gap. The offense is trying to stream in here from Q, but it's gonna be too little, too late. They're gonna have to back out, regroup a six, and look for another option. The only upside for them is that it wasn't a completely lost fight. They did build a piece in that vault, so alt game, alt economy wise, is going to be a little bit more even. But here we go, XQC leading the way, diving right in. Painless so immediately pushing God hand as it happens. Two kills here from the side of ninjas, and they're just going to hold on here. For this. Yeah, completely denying that entry, and as they even trickle in, Evo takes down ZZA, and now the DPS ultimates are up and at the ready for this NWA team. Reels could uh, bust out a pulse bomb at any given chance, but you think you want to combo that with Spree, who almost has the Graviton at the ready. That combo will be coming up here in Samoa, and I will say, I think the tank plays really is what's been setting this apart here, and I'll elaborate that on that in just a moment, because here we go, Quez and Wang, Spree, looking for a chance to grab the Graviton comes in, pulls in three, will Reels be coming at the Pulse Bomb? He will be, takes out God Hand, does a lot of damage to the rest inside, but they're able to come back with two kills of their own, it's going to the points, it's not worth here from Q, here comes ZZA, Dragon Blade on the righty, slicing, dicing, looking for Zarya, Spree going to fall, and it's in fact, going to be Q taking this point, so they were able to withstand the Graviton Pulse Bomb combo, still stay alive, get the kills they needed, and bring it right back, and uh, no small part to the ZZA Strike Blade at the very end. Yeah, Reels also tried to get in on the Zenyatta, and he also lost that fight as Kahuna was able to take him out very early. Soundbearer comes in, though, and here comes the Dragon Blade from Hoppy as he tries to get more. Transcendence is going to ruin a lot of that, but he finds Jolson all alone in the backside, unable to be covered by that Transcendence. Soundbearer coming out this time, though, as Spree takes down a kill of his own. And Dragon, uh, another Graviton coming out as well. And Happy right now, not to be denied, is in the back line. 40 HP, doesn't feel afraid, might be afraid though, eats the foot of Dahoon, will go down, but he created enough of a distraction that Watt is getting all sorts of cleanup. And to go to the point I was trying to make earlier here is that what interesting thing about this game here thus far is that I feel like Ninjas have been doing a much better job supporting their Winston player than yeah. we've been seeing from the side of Q. There's been a lot of times where XQC has just sort of dove in. The team hasn't been immediately behind him, and he sort of gets blown up as a result. And you look at even the beginning of the last round where Watt was able to just stay back and focus on him. That's a little bit rough, so I feel like the engages here from Q aren't quite to where they need to be. His hat, he takes out going to a really long range headshots. He's moving right in, trying to play perhaps on the menu, but he be needed. No, they're just burning it up right now. Spree, as you mentioned, they're, they're supporting their Winston, but a lot of it is because this Zarya play has been so astounding. Hitting long-range bombs to really get that ultimate charged up. They've had Graviton every moment that they've needed it. Have not even had to waste any follow-up on it, because Spree's been able to do it by himself. Here comes Happy Dragon Blade on the way. He's going to go for the cleanup here. Decide it wasn't necessary. Picks up the quick double kill. It was so late in the fight that there's not a great answer to that at that point. You just don't have the support tools. But Zen's coming in late. It is in overtime. This is the final opportunity for... Q to turn this round, ZZ at Dragon Blade takes out his counterpart, we'll have to put it away though, Winston in hot pursuit, immediately leaps out of there, Pulse Bomb is out! And this is the last gasp here, there are more members of Ninjas on the point, but it's a heroic effort coming out here from Q, they've gotten three kills, and moving it back forward, yeah, and Dahoon uh, going off, they're gonna retake this at the last moment. Is charging. Both their DPS staying alive a great deal of time too, ZZA with some nice evasion there as well as Jolson. So Dahoon does actually pick it up a lot in the kill feed too, and sometimes as a Zenyatta, you gotta carry because everyone's coming out of your life. If you can just protect yourself, you're gonna end up with a couple kills. So now they do flip it back over 57%, but right now it is only one more fight that they need to win. Here comes Watt right away. Uh, needing to win this but here comes the Graviton, out from three. did it get enough, the Pulse Bomb is out, real ZX, comboing, kick out, endless, three kills here for the side of Ninjas, it's not entirely free, ZZA, final heroic man here, Dragon Blade versus the world, gets the dash reset, does not get the final slice on the spree, that could have been bigger than it was, it was not, it is looking like 
ninjas will be able to recap this here in just a moment, but it's not coming super easy. So. Well, Godhand rolls in, trying to stall out, but he might have been better served just waiting for his team there as he had Soundbearer ready. The Pulse Bomb comes in late from Jolson, takes down one. Can he have more heroics? He is in trouble now on the point, and a 1v3. Not looking great for them as Winston is all over this Tracer. 9 HP left, does get taken out by Spree. The tanks continue to clean up for this NWA team. There is going to be a late Primal Rage to try to stall it out, but this is desperation mode. The interesting thing that's going on here, uh, Godhand looked like he was DC'd for a while. He just was not moving for a while. I don't know if that's going to affect them too much in the overtime, but probably would because they are just struggling for a bit. The they are keeping barrier, going yeah. up. Abby comes in with the Dragon Blade. We'll be up against the Sound Bear, but it's not going to be enough. Four kills here from Q, or from NWA, and they will be holding on. Now up two rounds to zero in this best of one. But never mind, if Q does get taken out here, they will go through the lower bracket, they will have their chance for redemption. Yeah, definitely lower bracket still in effect, as I would expect that Q takes out at least a couple rounds in our lower bracket, but it's down to best of one. It's not exactly the place you want to be. You want to win this matchup so that you're just not having to deal with the variance of a best of one. After this, we're going to best of three up top in the winner's bracket, but lower bracket will still be best of one. So definitely a lot on the line here, but for now, it remains that, as you mentioned, the tank play has been superior for this NWA team. They just seem to be working a little bit better together. Even when Watt gets in trouble, Spree's there to save him and vice versa. So we've always lauded like these great tank combinations. Of course, always Cloud9 comes to mind how well their tanks play together. But you need that on these medium levels to be able to actually pull off a lot of stuff, especially on King of the Hill. We are always running a Winston and Azaria. Alrighty, well, we're starting out here once more. It will be Watt versus XQC to start things off here. XQC taking a little bit more of a turn approach, not leaving in. It's going to be Watt that leaves first right now, going right to the back line, staying on the Lucio. But while this is going on, he's been able to punish Real ZX. Feels like the team that's been leaving him right now is getting punished harder. It's two quick kills here from the side of Q, as Jolson is able to get the cleanup he's looking for. Only two members left here of NWA, and three will be the last fall. Yeah, ZZA picks up a couple kills towards the end there on both of the tanks, so that is going to be first capture for Q right now, as ZZA actually comes alive here. It's a great point for a Genji. We'll see if his Genji can get a little more done than Hoppy's Genji here, as both teams running an absolute near composition. Still, though, this is the best uh, chance that Q has had pretty much all match long. We'll see if they right. can keep the momentum. And ZCA right now, soon to have a Dragon Blade, just needs to land a little bit more. Looking for the dash deep in, hits three people with the Swift Strike. Gonna back out, gets a good deflect. Almost has Dragon Blade. This is good stuff from ZCA. Here we go. Dragon Blade will be on the way. He's only at 1.3. He's still gonna have to go for it. Dragon Blade now being achieved. Moving to the back line. Slicing takes down Evo. Looking for more. He gets one kill. He gets one kill. Dragon Blade is looking for it. Ends up in a Graviton. His screen turns it right on him. That is going to be a recap here for NWA. Well, they lost to Hoon really, really early into that fight, which hurt them a lot, because then you don't have your Discord to deal with tanks, and you don't have any of the healing to go with those mobile heroes like uh, ZZA there, who would have loved to have an orb on him during that ultimate. So, losing him early in that fight really hurt. He does come back in and take a kill down, but now it's Hoppy. He's got the Dragon Blade out and not the ready. He's going for Zarya right away. She bubbles up, so he does not get her immediately, but he takes out Endless, looking for a little bit more as the Transcend comes out. Not much more as they bust out both Transcends. This would be horrible for Q if they did not win this fight. They came up the sound barrier. They had a pretty good advantage. They got met, met with another sound barrier mid-fight, though. And right now, it's pretty even. It's back and forth by both teams. Happy, though, able to take out the Winston with the aid of his team. Moving to the back line, looking for Tracer. Tracer being a whole lot of poke in the process. It's still pretty close, but Happy, pretty soon, he's going to have the finishing Dragon Blade here in just a moment. Just needs a few more right clicks, and that will be finishing up the fight if he's able to stay alive. But yeah. Locked back, able to make the most of his destruction. Well, Watt's just been on hunt down duty. He's not letting anyone get out alive who doesn't deserve to. It looked like for a moment ZZA was going to be able to get out and get a pack, but then he had Watt right in his face, noticing that he was down to 20. Although ZZA was much more effective that time because Cahoon was alive and he had the Harmony Orb on him, allowing him to live much longer than maybe he was even expecting. But Watt right now holding sway on center. They're going to have both tank, ups all, tank alts up here momentarily. A lot of alts incoming from both sides. Right, well, here we go, Happy has Dragon Blade ready, dashes right in on the set, the Moon in trouble, still staying alive, will finally fall. With Dragon Blade coming out here, Ground Sun is up, Happy looking for the fall through, but Reels gets a Pulse Bomb, takes out the two there. Happy is going to have the chance of bringing up Dragon Blade, as Jolson right now, looking to turn this right back in his team's favor. Is run to the back line, Baneless in trouble, almost getting taken out, but no, it's Winston with the save, Watt 7, able to save his Zen at least for a little bit longer, takes out Jolson, even though Baneless falls. That was still extra time bought there by Watt7, and now at 94%, this is do or die for the offense of Q. They must come in and turn this, they're gonna get knocked to the lower bracket. Here they go, they're on the way. Final fight on the 
way. GZA has Dragon Blades up and ready. Will he be able to turn down? He's already lost two teammates here. Can he do this? Takes out Evo. Looking for more. Gets the double kill. ZZA. Will he be able to do it? Transcendence though going to Stymium towards the end. What with the cleanup? It is looking like NWA is going to be able to hold on to the next round. Yeah, Zarya chunking there towards the end. And the last couple weeks when we've seen the resurgence of all these tanks, we've seen a resurgence of playmaking Winstons. And it's not something you necessarily remember or expect, but from the Korean teams to some of these mid-level kind of getting into the top tier teams, the Winstons have been a huge difference and Watt had a phenomenal set. Watt was playing well in general, and I mentioned yeah. it earlier in the set, but it's, it really did feel like it wasn't just EPS play that was setting NWA apart here. They had really good tank play in particular that really went well, and Watt, I think, displayed a little bit superior game sense there. And bear in mind, by the way, when you talk about good tank play, it's not just what the tanks are doing, it's how the team is playing around the tanks. I feel like yeah. XQC, maybe he was making the right calls and saying, let's go in, but he didn't have everyone on the same page, and even just a split second of dissonance where not everyone is thinking the same thing can be absolutely brutal to a team completely agree so it is going to be nwa moving on into our best of threes we'll take a brief look at the bracket here and see who they might be facing off against but that is uh q going down to the lower bracket and nwa continues to impress they won the gosu uh, eu yesterday and looking to add another thousand dollars in their pocket today